Over two dozen states and several high-profile universities have implemented TikTok bans and a bipartisan coalition in Congress trying to ban the app altogether. Yahoo Finance's Dan Howley joining us now to tell us why an outright ban might be highly unlikely. Hey, Dan. Yeah, I, I basically talked to a number of experts, uh, legal scholars, uh, and those who have looked at this before. And essentially, the consensus is, look, this is a First Amendment issue for Americans. So the, the idea here is that uh, the U.S. government officials fear that TikTok is collecting data on Americans and that the Chinese Communist Party can then per, per, uh, pressure TikTok to share that data with them. They're able to do that with any company that operates within China right now. TikTok is an entity uh, that's still related to ByteDance, but has some headquarters in the US. So they're desperately trying to distance themselves from this narrative. They also have started moving US consumer data to Oracle's cloud uh, platforms, but that hasn't eased the fears of legislators or regulators in Washington. And so now they're trying to move forward with these bans. We have uh, Senator Marco Rubio had uh, tried to uh, introduce a ban uh, nationwide for TikTok. And as you said, we have a number of states and high profile universities outright banning the app. There's two things here. Those bans don't really matter. Uh, while the government employees can't use TikTok, it only refers to their phones. Uh, if it's a government uh, man uh, issued phone. You can take your own phone and use TikTok all you want at home if you're a government employee. So it's not actually banning it uh, from all users at all, really. It's just on government devices. That also goes for uh, universities uh, and states. The second issue, though, is would an all out ban actually work? And from who I've spoken to, it's not going to because that is a, a direct First Amendment violation. It would be challenged by the Supreme Court. And the Supreme Court has actually held that certain blocking off large portions of certain social media apps is tantamount to blocking free speech. And so it's unlikely that we'll ever see a full ban on TikTok here in the U.S. Dan, when it comes to what we've heard from the administration, where they stand in all of this, what do you think that we could potentially hear in the coming months as this debate does heat up? Yeah, I think what uh, what we're going to see from the administration is more along the lines of uh, negotiations with TikTok continuing. Uh, they're obviously trying to work with them now. Uh, they didn't decide to ban it or try to ban it the way uh, the Trump administration had. Uh, and the reason being because that kind of effort was shot down by the court. So it's not exactly uh, a way where Biden can just sign a pen uh, or use his pen and sign a paper and say that TikTok is now banned in the U.S. It's just not going to happen that way uh, because of the free speech implications. The the other uh, thing that, they, that could be pursued uh, is that it's uh, a national security concern. Uh, but one of the experts that I had spoken to had said that, look, if uh, Congress does try to play this out as a national security concern, uh, then they're going to have to reveal exactly why it is. And that could reveal uh, the way that the U.S. is able to gather secrets. And yeah, I just want to point out that uh, there was um, uh, one publication uh, I think slips my mind right now. Uh, but the way they point uh, said it was, look, if you can read uh, Russian propaganda like RT uh, or watch RT in the U.S., um, there's no reason why you wouldn't be able to be on TikTok. Uh, you can read propaganda newspapers if you want. That doesn't mean you can't be on TikTok. So, you know, it's it's the same idea. You have access to all this information uh, just because it's out there doesn't necessarily, uh, and uh, some folks don't like it, doesn't necessarily mean that you can't have access to it. All right, Dan Halley, great stuff. Thanks so much.